guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a doorway shelf. Well, there's a bit of a story behind this one, and it's as easy as saying that since I was a kid, I've been a fan of the Muppets. And over the years, uh, people keep giving me, and I've uh, acquired several uh, stuffed Muppets. And they're kind of taken over. And um, what I'd like is a kind of Muppet shelf to sit above the doorway so that they can be up and out of the way, but still protect it and still around. Um, so I'm not sure what to make it out of other than the thickness of the stock. And with that, I'm going to go half inch. Well, looking here at the rack, I see way up at the top, I see some maple pieces. And that, believe it or not, is still offcuts from the workbench build. Um, I'm still trying to use them up. So I'm going to pull those down and see what the dimensions are. And maybe um, they'll be good enough for this shelf. Well, I managed to salvage some of the pieces out of the rack, and uh, I think they're going to work just fine. They do need some final milling and some final planing, so I'm going to run them through the thickness planer and just see what the final thickness is. Um, I said that I wanted to run a half inch shelf, but there is no weight being held on this shelf, so if it's a little uh, thinner, like 3 8 that sort of thing, I'm okay with that. So let's get the planer running and see what our final dimension is that we end up with on these shelves. Well, we actually did all right. We ended up with um, stock that is 5 8 of an inch thick for the actual shelf. And there's going to be some decorative sides on this shelf. And we ended up with some stock that is 3 8 of an inch thick for that. So the first thing that we want to do is cut the width of our shelf. And for that, I've decided that I'd like to have six inches wide. Now, whatever your application, of course, you can adjust that. But for my purposes, I'm going to rip the 5 8 inch thick stock uh, to six inches in width. Now that you've got your width ripped, the next thing you want to do is measure uh, edge to edge to the frame around your door. That'll be the molding, uh, not your actual door, because this shelf will actually sit on top of the molding of the doorway. Um, in my case, I measured it, it's 35 and a quarter. So you don't want a shelf that's larger than that. For me, I'm going to make this shelf at 34 inches uh, long, and um, you'll see how it goes from there. So let's rip that piece, or sorry, cross cut that piece at 34 inches. And there you have it a shelf. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm kidding, but that is the platform of your shelf pretty much done. That's all there is to it. A six inch wide board to whatever length that you need. And in this case, five eighths of an inch thick. Um, now comes the fun part. This is the part that I love to do. And uh, it all starts on the internet with Googling some images. Well, the concept or the theory on the shelf that I wanna make is that, um, <clears throat> The shelf itself is actually fairly plain, but on either side of the shelf will be a Muppet character that will basically sandwich in any of the items that are on the shelf. So I googled images of uh, Muppet silhouettes and I got this one. And uh, I think it's awesome and uh, I mean who doesn't love the Swedish chef? So this is going to end up being our uh, bookend kind of things of the shelf. It's what's going to keep these uh, plush 
animals from falling off the edge. So what I'm going to do is, again, as you've seen me do many times, I'm going to make a template of this particular pattern and uh, or picture, and I'm going to cut it out of some quarter inch MDF. So my 3 8 inch thick maple boards um, are 7 inches wide. So I've trimmed this picture up so that it's 7 inches wide. It's not rocket science, that's the only amount of board that I have. Um, but what I'm going to do now in order to make a template here is I'm going to flip this over and I've got some spray adhesive and I'm going to give it a generous coating on the back of this, let it tack up for three minutes, and then I'm going to rub it down to a piece of quarter inch hardboard and then cut it out on the scroll saw. Don't forget to clear your nozzle, guys. And our three minutes are up. And this is nice and tacky. We're just going to carefully line it up with the edge here. And once we get it lined up, we'll just rub it down. And just like that, our pattern is attached. Now, we just need to cut it out. So, with a number three reverse tooth blade, we're going to head over to the scroll saw and uh, cut this out.
Well, now that we have the template cut, the object is to cut two of these and they will get mounted like this at the ends of the shelf. You can see how cool that is. Come on, that's awesome. So <clears throat> I'm going to cut the seven inch wide, three eighths thick maple into usable pieces. In this particular case, for me, for this pattern, I only need eight and a half inches. So I'm going to cut this into eight and a half squares, put the rest back on the rack, and then uh, I'm going to trace out the pattern onto my stock and cut them at the scroll saw. Um, you guys don't need another video of that. You saw me cut the uh, actual template itself, so there's no need to see it again. So I'm going to see you when I get those two pieces cut. Well, with both our silhouettes cut, you can see how this kind of starts to come together. And one thing I want to point out is you want to make sure that this back edge here and this bottom are actually a square edge because that is the bottom of the shelf and the back end that will go to the wall. Um, before we get into mounting these side pieces onto our base shelf, there is one more piece that needs to be made. And what it's going to be, excuse me for reaching in front of the camera, is it's going to be a piece of maple. Um, this piece is going to be three eighths of an inch thick. And in this case, it's an inch and a quarter wide. And what that's going to do is that's going to get mounted at the back, just like this, with some mounting holes in it. Um, there will be some screw holes and countersinks here. And that is how it will get attached to the wall. Now, what we're going to want to do is in each of our silhouettes at the back at the same height, we're going to want to cut a recess to sit this particular piece in so that we can screw it in and it can be nice and flush. So first thing we need to do is cut it to length. And the length of this piece will be the length of our shelf plus the width of each one of our Swedish chefs. So there you can see at four inches up, I've placed a mark here and this is my notch of three eighths of an inch deep and it's an inch and a quarter long. I'm going to cut this out of both of the upright pieces and that is the recess that we're going to mount that uh, rear backing bar to. And there is the basic gist of our shelf. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do before we get into mounting this bar and securing it into those notches is we're going to want to drill our mounting holes. Now, if you're going into a uh, hollow wall, say with uh, 16 inch centers on the studs, you want to put your holes at 16 inches to center. Um, if not, in my case, I'm going into a plaster wall. So I pretty much have free reign to go wherever I want here. So I'm probably going to come in about six inches in from either side of my, um, my mounting rail here. And I'm going to drill and countersink um, so that we can get a nice flush screw mount once we mount it to the wall. Well, you can see we've got the mounting holes drilled and countersunk. Well, now we want to come in from the end, 3 sixteenths of an inch, and in the center of our piece, drill another hole and countersink for a number six screw. And that is how these particular, or this particular piece, is going to be mounted in that notch. It will be glued and screwed into place. Uh, you won't see the screws, of course, because it will be mounted to the wall. So drill another mounting hole there and uh, countersink it so that the screw sits nice and flush. Well, I'm going to pull this apart at the moment. And we want to give all of the pieces a good sanding uh, with 220 grit sandpaper. And as well, this front edge of our shelf, I'm going to do a quarter inch round over on the top and bottom. Well, 
now we have to work on these side uprights. And we're going to mount these to the main shelf uh, with a couple of dowels on the inside. That way we're not, uh, they're not seen. We don't have screws on the outside and what have you. So the base is five eighths uh, of an inch thick. So at five sixteenths up from the bottom of each of our shafts and three quarters of an inch in from the back. And uh, I guess we'll go two and a half inches in from the back. We're going to drill a uh, quarter inch hole. Now we don't want it to go all the way through. So um, we'll probably go with this being three eighths, probably just uh, maybe a quarter inch deep at the most. And we'll stop it at that. And uh, once you get those two holes drilled, then we're going to mark them onto our main shelf. And there we have our holes drilled. We're just going to use a couple dowel centers and we're going to place those in those holes that we just drilled and line up each one of the sides with the uh, backs or sorry, the bottom shelf and the back edge. Give them a little tap and that will transfer our marks and then we can drill the ends of our shelf and uh, we can glue and dowel pin uh, our shafts to the end of our shelf. So we're just using a straight edge here to make sure that we have alignment of our um, uprights to the back edge of our shelf. We're going to hold it gently in place like that and just with our carving mallet here just going to give it a little wrap and that will transfer both of our marks not sure how well you can see that. Let me see if I can focus in for you. But that will transfer both of our marks there and there. And uh, we can drill those now to accept our dowels. And with the holes drilled in the end of our shelf, we'll apply a bunch of glue and then we'll insert our quarter inch maple dowels and they will line up with the holes drilled in the shaft and we will clamp it together. and this side and the other side, and then that section of our shelf will be complete. And now it's time to glue it together. Um, you may note that I have the back of the shelf towards me, and that's so that once I get this all glued and clamped, I can still work on it, uh, leaving it clamped on the bench here. I can work on it and get that back support put in. So, <clears throat> Let's glue these dowels in and get these side pieces glued to the shelf. Well, we're waiting for this to dry up, but while we're waiting, there's no reason that we can't put this cross mounting bar in. And all we do for this is line it up flush with the edges of our Swedish Chef. And we're just going to drill a pilot hole right through our uh, countersunk holes that we already did. We're going to glue uh, our piece in and then reinforce it with a number six by three quarter inch screw.
And now that we know that the board lines up, we've got the pilot holes drilled, the screws are installed, we're going to take it apart, add some glue into these slots, and screw it all together. Um, and then just run over the project with a piece of sandpaper, checking for any burrs from cutting it on the scroll saw, etc. And just clean up the edges. And uh, that would be about it, guys. Okay, for real this time. And there you have it. An over-the-door shelf, or in my case, a Muppet shelf. Guys, this isn't about making a Muppet shelf. What it's about is making an over-the-door shelf and customizing it to whatever it is that you would like it to be. Um, you know, whether it be for your kids or for yourself or a shelf for your shop or whatever, it doesn't matter. Even if it's just a shelf and you happen to like a certain thing. If you happen to like turtles, make the side ends turtles. If you happen to like frogs, make it a frog. Make it whatever you like. It's all about customization. That's what this show is about. And showing you that you can make a nice looking shelf that's fun and functional with minimal tools. Like, there's no real fancy tools here. I used a table saw and a scroll saw and a hand drill. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Even if I didn't have a scroll saw, you could still do this with a fret saw. It would take you longer, yeah, but you could still do it. It's all about doing it, not just sitting here watching my show. It's about taking what you've learned on this show and bringing it to your shop. So whether you're making a shelf for your kids or whether you're making it for someone like me who has never really grown up and is still a kid inside and still loves the Muppets and all that fun stuff, you've got to give this one a try. You know what I'm going to say. Guys, this is an awesome project. And I want to thank you for tuning in. And I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.